Sup, David here. Today I want to talk to you about haters, about critics, and how they will always be part of human life and human society. So having haters, having people dislike your idea or your thoughts, and just criticizing other people, and just honestly, people that are dishonest. These people will always exist because this is actually very evolutionary and very biological. Because in game theory, if we have a perfect world, there's always going to be that one guy that's going to ruin it for everybody else. He's, he or she is going to see that they, people are trusting everybody, fully trusting everybody, and he's going to exploit that and take advantage of that so that he can get something out of it. So there's always going to be, under the system, under, under the system of society and under our current system of evolution, there's always going to be haters and there's always going to be that one guy that's going to ruin it for the entire party. But it does kind of make sense in a logical way because uh, you know, they get something out of it if they exploit that system, right? But you don't want to be that guy. So don't be that person, don't be that critic or that hater. And the thing is, critics, they will always exist. Even if you take the safest route ever, even if you are the most benevolent and compassionate person ever, you will still get dislikes and get hates. Even, even an Abraham Lincoln, even a, a Mother Teresa, they will get hate. If, if they produced a YouTube video, there will still be dislikes on that video. So it's just how society as a whole, we operate. There's always going to be a few people that are going to criticize, that are going to hate, and that they're, they're just going to be dishonest. So if that's the case, if, if these people are pretty much inevitable, then if we can get hate even for saying in the safe zone, even for saying the safest things, then why not speak the truth? Why not live on the edge? Why not live our truth? Why not be authentic? Instead of being in the middle, in the safe middle zone, why not be a little edgy and a little, be a little out there? I mean, of course, I'm not trying to say you should be edgy for the sake of being edgy. You should be edgy for the sake of, of following your truth, right? of being authentic to yourself, of living up to what you believe, what you believe in. Okay, so that, that's a reason for edginess because you know what? A lot of innovation, a lot of great ideas, creative ideas, they happen outside of the middle zone, right? They happen out onto, on the side of edginess, right? Maybe not to the way extremes, and we talked about this, but not going to the way extremes of things, but you want to lean on the side of edginess, right? You're kind of being fully authentic, but you're meeting society halfway. So if, if, if like we are going to get hate, if you're going to get criticized, uh, you know, um, hated on anyways, then why not just speak our truth and deliver our heart and soul out there? Because the safe things to say, usually, they're not the most exciting, they're not the most passionate, and they're definitely not the most heartfelt. Usually, the ones that are filled with love, filled with passion and compassion, and the most heartfelt messages and actions they lay outside of that comfort zone, of that safe zone. They lay on the side of edginess. So that's it for this video. Be a little edgy. Lean on that side of, of, of being a little bit out there. But of course, deliver that with heart and your soul. That's it. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.